Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. In this lesson, I'm just going to do a quick little talk about tuning the mandolin. If you pick up your mandolin, and it sounds like that, it means it's probably time to tune it. Um, now there's a couple ways of going about tuning. I have a tuner here, a little clip-on tuner that shows you the note. Um, and what I'll do here actually is just move over a little bit. And I don't know if this will come through on the video. Uh, it can be a little finicky, but I'll give it a shot. Um, it's a little hard because now I'm looking at it backwards on the screen. I may have to move it around here and there. Um, but if your strings are too flat, and you, you know, I need a G there, tuning up. These little machines are not particularly expensive, you know, around 10 or 15 bucks. Um, and as you're going, you get closer to that green line, and hey, there's that G. And you go, oops, I went too far. Um, one big thing that I like to do on the instrument is rather, when I'm, if I go too far and come back down, rather than stopping there and being like, okay, I'm coming back down and I hit G, I always go a little farther and tune up to the note. And then do the same thing. Whoops, went too far. And as you tune one string, it'll make all your other strings go out of tune. So it can be a bit of a process. But uh, it, the, the more you do it, the, the quicker you'll get at it. Um, so again, just the, the notes on the mandolin, you have a G string, and then a D string, Oops. and then an A string, and then an E string. G, D, A, E, two of each. Um, and what I really want to, if you're having trouble tuning and you feel like your mandolin is always out of tune, or you tune it and then it's um, it's going out of tune quickly, there's a couple things that can uh, affect that. One is try doing that method where you always tune up to the note, and if you go too far, tune that back down below the note you're looking for, and then back to it. Um, if that's still not doing it, um, and your instrument is still, you know, it plays in tune for a moment and then goes out of tune, there's a couple things that can happen. Um, one is that sometimes strings just, after a really long time, they just won't sound in tune anymore, and it's just time for a new set of strings. Um, another thing that can happen is if the, the slots in the nut or the bridge are not the right size for the gauge strings that you have. The the strings can get caught in those grooves um, and then slowly release. So, you know, maybe you tune up to G and then play for a little bit. And if your string then goes is sharp after a little while, it could be because that nut slot isn't quite right for the strings you're using. Um, so check that either at the bridge or at the nut. And if you're not comfortable doing that, your local well-respected um, instrument repair person uh, will be able to check that out for you real quick. It's a, a quick and easy fix if something's going awry in there. Um, another thing that can happen is sort of poor tuning machines. Uh, honestly, that uh, sort of switching out your tuning machines is one of the last things, you know, most, even the cheapest tuning machines, unless there's something really kind of going awry with them, um, even the cheapest machines will will generally keep in tune, and it's much more likely to have either really old strings or something going on that's catching the strings in the nut or at the bridge um, that's going to affect your tuning more than a fancy new set of tuners. And it's a lot cheaper to have, you know, something worked on at the nut or the bridge than to get a new, you know, you can pay anywhere from 50 to $500 for a set of tuners. Um, so those are some ideas of how to keep the mandolin more in tune. Um, again, as, as you work at this, 
it gets a little easier every time. Again, as you tune, all the other strings will go out. And eventually you'll be able to just tune some strings. So, for example, these are not quite together. Try, try practicing and using your ear. You'll hear these little beats or little like wobbles. Wah, 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 wah. And as you get closer to the note, that wobble will go away. And then also that sound between sets of strings, that fifth, so like between the A and the E strings, if that's out of, out of pitch, it won't sound right and you'll get that same sort of wobble in your ears. And as that gets closer to that true perfect fifth, Uh, you'll be more in tune. And practicing tuning without a tuning, uh, without a t uh, tuner like this can be a good a good thing to practice in case you ever run out of batteries or find yourself in a situation where you need to tune by ear. Also, uh, a lot of times you can train your ears to be more sensitive than a tuner. So sometimes my tuner will say I'm in tune, but my ears can hear that it's not quite right just because. You know, it's not the most accurate thing in the world. Sometimes as the batteries and tuners go dead, um, they become less accurate. Um, so learning to get that, to develop your ear to be able to tune without a tuner can be a very helpful thing. And violin players do it all the time. You know, a lot of times... Uh, fiddle players or violin players will much rather tune by ear and hear those beats and get the, the tuning just right than to use a tuner. Um, so I hope that helps. I hope if you have any tuning problems that helps you sort some out. If your instrument just isn't playing in tune um, and you, you know, if you're, if you tune everything just right and, you, and it sounds right when played open or playing a, a chord that's, you know, fairly close down here, but as you get up the neck, you know, things start getting out of whack. Um, what you want to do is I've got a couple videos out on setting up your instrument and adjusting the intonation and how to move your bridge and why and where to move your bridge. Um, so check those out because those can really um, affect how in tune your instrument sounds. Um, and so check those out. Those are also over at mandolessons.com. I hope all of this information uh, is useful. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment or shoot me an email over at my website. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks so much and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.